Good. Then, uh, thanks everybody uh, for joining today. Um, um, I shortly want to introduce uh, myself. Uh, my name is Martin. Um, I'm uh, working uh, for Daimler Trucks uh, since uh, more than 15 years. Currently, I'm uh, working in Japan um, for the subsidiary of the Asian uh, Truck uh, Division, uh, Mitsubishi Fuso Truck. Um, I'm here ma ma mainly coming from the finance area and project management. So, Akash, please introduce yourself as well. Yep. So, thanks everyone for joining uh, and good morning and good evening at your time zones. So, uh, myself, Akash Modi, and uh, I'm basically a blockchain solution architect working for, uh, again, Daimler Trucks and uh, all the global divisions. And uh, I'm mainly a research explorer in the uh, machine to machine economy and uh, vehicle readiness for uh, such a market. And how can we enable these uh, vehicles to participate in the V2X economic uh, ecosystem? And uh, I'm also always interested in exploring new technologies and uh, see how those can be implemented in the current uh, scenarios and uh, what value they can bring. And uh, I have also uh, patented the economic identifier in the V2X economy for the machines, which is recently uh, got patented. And another patent which uh, I have done is uh, Know Your Machines. So, and we are a uh, very strong forward thinker. Uh, we always think that uh, the trucks one day can become fully autonomous and we can enable that. So that's a brief on my behalf, and uh, I'm sure that you will get to know more as soon as you uh, proceed. As soon as we proceed further together on this talk. Thanks, Martin. Thanks. Good. Then uh, let's uh, start. Um, I think uh, for, first let's uh, give you a, a few words. Uh, we are coming from the commercial vehicle uh, industry, so uh, more or less trucks and buses. Um, Trucks and buses, uh, there is uh, uh, a big uh, change uh, is, is coming currently and uh, which will shape the future of the uh, com uh, commercial vehicle industry. Uh, one thing is for sure the alternative powertrains. So uh, we are heavily working to replace uh, um, traditional um, gasoline and um, diesel engines by electric uh, fuel cell uh, powertrains. Um, also, the autonomous driving is one of the um, game changer uh, in the future of the vehicles. Um, and uh, the base for all uh, is the connectivity topic. Uh, we are um, on the way to connect every uh, commercial vehicles uh, which is uh, sold to customer not only um, provide them with the trucks, but also with the services of the trucks. Um, our journey um, started, I think, uh, three years ago, where we uh, discussed uh, about uh, some business cases uh, and um, prototypes about uh, uh, sometimes involving a blockchain um, and how the uh, truck can utilize uh, technologies in the future. Um, one of uh, the first uh, um, learnings which we needed uh, to learn at the beginning is that in the future, um, so that the truck will be able to participate uh, in digital services and be part of it, we need um, a machine identity. Yeah? And uh, we uh, had a look uh, at different areas and uh, we found this evolutions of machines. So we also said, Every machine has needs like basic humans. And once uh, we looked and shaping our projects, uh, we said we need to look at the base. Huh? What are the basic needs for uh, machine needs? Like the physical needs, energy, infrastructure, computing power and connectivity. This is already set uh, in uh, every trucks uh, of uh, Daimler. Yeah, there is uh, one device who bring uh, the uh, capabilities uh, to connect um, uh, the truck to, let's say, the, the, the internet and to the world and has communication capabilities and computing power. 
The next step was that we said uh, we need to bring safety into this yeah, so that the truck can defend himself against uh, attacks. And afterwards, uh, we started uh, the social belongings and cooperation where the business uh, model came in. Yeah? That we said, okay, what is now where a uh, task the truck can work, do in the future with his machine identity and with his ownership that the truck can um, act on behalf of the owner in the future? Because in the future, as I said before, one of the big topics is autonomous driving. So. Um, there is a, a trend to reduce the drivers or maybe take it out of the vehicles itself. So the truck uh, or the machine needs to take over the tasks. Then the level, uh, the, the highest level is self actualization and esteem, like for sure that the machine will have an own reputation and attention and maybe cognitive capabilities and um, artificial feelings and creativity and can. Uh, design their own routes or trips. So this is where we thought about. Can you sh uh, go to the next screen, Akash? Yeah, sure. Um, and this is how we imagine uh, the V2X uh, economy. The truck uh, itself uh, is more or less connecting to different areas, to different partners. One is the infrastructure. Infrastructure is like toll station, fueling station, washing, parking, which he needs in the daily business. Also the grid, maybe in the future when we talk about electricity, um, they can uh, identify themselves and uh, let's say maybe even pay or, or that will pay directly uh, for the needs. For sure, uh, there is important uh, for autonomous to also maybe in the future communicate with other vehicles yeah, for safety reasons. And uh, the vehicle to cloud is normally that there is capability to um, communicate with other backend systems, yeah, like the fleet management system, um, where uh, with the freight management, where the tasks and the transportation tasks are managed and uh, the cost management, the SAP system, uh, how um, that the truck can directly, let's say, send uh, invoices or receive revenues uh, for his services. So, um, Akash, maybe you can go to the next slide. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Martin, for such a wonderful uh, introduction, like where the vehicles are heading and where we are bringing them together into the world of the V2X economy system. So this is what we think that in future, vehicles will be self-reliant to manage their own profit and loss uh, center. We do not need uh, any administrative efforts to expand on vehicles to make sure that what vehicle is earning for a company, how uh, how much it is spending on its uh, uh, needs like we saw in the evolution of machines and uh, how much it is uh, making profit so the overall aspect of uh, bringing such a profit and loss center from an oem perspective we have to determine the life cycle of a commercial vehicle be it a bus be it a long hauling truck be it a medium duty truck or a heavy duty truck more or less all are doing the similar operations and uh, all of them are having the similar needs so we uh, we did the exploration how this life cycle of a commercial vehicle can be determined and we divided the whole life cycle of the vehicle into three segments majorly one of them is i am just like a human vehicle also needs an identity which is irreplaceable irrevocable non-repudiated and temper proof and which is, which is coming from the vehicle not uh, not coming from any additional device which is uh, portable to the vehicle and uh, making sure that the vehicle is having an identity those those are not the things which we are looking to we want a vehicle uh, to have its own identity which is uh, uh, which is legally approved 
which is having all the valid uh, authenticity uh, to prove its uh, identity in the market to uh, various infrastructure be it v2c be it v2i v2g or vehicle to vehicle but it should be capable of and more or less the ultimate requirement is that it should be secured it shouldn't be forged so this is how we think a vehicle should be identified and uh, definitely we will get into the details of uh, all these three segments in the upcoming slide but then the second segment what we think is i live so as a human live for uh, and the human is having basic needs like the food and the energy and um, uh, maintenance as you can say how i maintain uh, myself just like that vehicle is also having the similar requirements they have a requirement of uh, having the fueling be it uh, energy be it a uh, hydrogen power cell or uh, be it lng or cpg or um, gasoline anything but they have a requirement where they spend something on themselves which is mm -hmm. right now coming out of the cost functions where and so where someone at the company is uh, managing those uh, cost and the bills together but uh, this should be ideally managed if by the vehicle itself in the autonomous industry and then i work definitely uh, as i work in a company then i earn my uh, living likewise vehicle uh, should be the very minute uh, or uh, i would say the sku level unit in the industry where it uh, uh, it identifies its own profit at the month end Maybe I'll uh, walk you through the details of uh, each and of uh, these segments in the upcoming slide. So the very first thing, like uh, how we define a vehicle is, so currently uh, all the vehicles are globally identified by the VIN number. But when we look at the capabilities of the VIN, it is quite static and um, it is a single uh, number which is uh, enough to identify the uniqueness of the vehicle but when we talk about the digital services it is not capable to uh, do the um, to prove its identity or to say yeah this is me so that's where we think that we have to have something like economic identifier which can be a, a self sovereign identity of the vehicle or a digital decentralized identity of the vehicle or a cryptographic identity of the vehicle or maybe uh, identity like win but what are the characteristics it should bring to so the basic characteristic of economic identifier where we need uh, this vehicle is it should be uh, able to identify its uh, physical location its uh, physical asset uh, what it is and what the type of the vehicle is and where this identity belongs to in particular like which onboard unit is having the identity of this vehicle or is this replaceable or irreplaceable so making sure this gives a vehicle its birth proof and it's a uh, so what we think here that uh, all the blockchain related identities how they are uh, coming up is they have the private key and the public key pair so can we have something like a hsm in the vehicles where we keep these uh, private keys and make sure that uh, uh, these vehicles are able to prove its identity by providing the digital signatures on the uh, documents which is being provided to them and make sure that whatever identity is given to them it's uh, it's intact throughout the life cycle of the vehicle then the second thing uh, which we need to enable the vehicles uh, as in the im segment is the vehicle documentation um if we look at the vehicle type uh, we uh, get a lot of documentation uh, from the legals like uh, the registration the license plate number or uh, as in like uh, we have the owner information we have the manufacturing information so all this information together makes sure that vehicle is a legal entity to run on the roads it pays taxes and um, it it can be traced back to the uh, owner so all those things we have to uh, bring together and we need to see what is the bare minimum requirement to make this vehicle as a financial entity in the in the traditional in, let let it be the traditional financing or 
the banking or the DLT based or the CBDC based. So what is the bare minimum need to make sure that the vehicle is a, a legal entity to make the transactions and to maintain the bills and the invoices? So that's where we introduce uh, something like uh, um, know your customer. So you can say know your vehicle, uh, which is the utmost requirement. Then the global certification, because uh, all the autonomous vehicles are having hundreds of softwares and um, all the components which are uh, perfectly which are being driven over the air updates and all these things so this is where we have to follow all the regulations which are being set by the unic or uwta or european reasons or any global uh, entity where we have to comply like uh, whether uh, this vehicle which is running on the road is uh, uh, having a certified software or not what is the life of that software and then the fourth uh, section in this IM segment is the acquisition and the dispose. As a vehicle, I should be completely aware that whether I am owned by someone or I am being leased by someone, what is the, my first life cycle when I'm getting sold in the resale market, who is owning it again? Do I have the correct owner information? Do I have the correct financial statements available from the bank? So likewise if we look at the uh, consolidation of these four sections in this im segment this brings the basic requirement of a vehicle to make sure that it is almost equal to a living entity so that's where um, we uh, move to the i live segment where the vehicle is mainly uh, going for like uh, what i uh, generally need so what we have seen in the uh, fleet operations, like uh, I need uh, to, I need a fuel, I need uh, a parking, I need a uh, uh, tolling, I need to pay for the tolls, I need to pay for washing. Likewise, there are multiple uh, services where the vehicle is required to pay for something which they are consuming. So um, at this point of time, how it works in the current industry that there is someone at the back end, back offices managing all these bills together, doing the monthly closing and then paying for uh, all the bills uh, which are being provided by the service providers to those companies or um, something like that. But what happens in the future when uh, a vehicle is on the road and whatever it needs, it should be able to identify itself at the service provider and then the, it should be able to consume the services which are being provided by the service provider. It should be able to validate all the bills together which has been uh, given to the vehicle uh, against the services consumed and based on this intelligent uh, uh, validation, he can make a decision whether this will is correct or it should be going for the disputed if the bill counts correct, then it can simply sign on it and which can further go to uh, the banking system and uh, the overall monthly closing can be done based on these uh, vehicle signed. In this way, we can also eradicate some of the frauds, which are generally happens at the fuel level, which are generally happens at the odometer level in the resale market. So all these signals that we are getting from the telemetry we can get it signed and have these bills and the invoices getting signed we can simply eradicate a lot of administrative effort at the back offices of the logistic companies so this is where we are heading to uh, where we talk about the i live section and uh, services maintenance definitely when there is a sudden breakdown or when there is a monthly service or uh, half yearly service so whether a vehicle can maintain its service history, what are all uh, components has gone down, what was the service period, what was the warranty period, whether it was under the warranty period, did I pay for something which was under the warranty period. So all these intelligence we want to bring under the service and maintenance section. And we also want a vehicle to track its life cycle from one owner to another owner, one location to another location one registration to another registration so that this life cycle, uh, this vehicle can be tracked right from the inception, right when it's coming out uh, from the assembly line of the manufacturing unit till it gets disposed or the scrapped out or uh, is scrapped out in the scrapping industry. 
तो दिस इज वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू ट्रैक एंड फाइंड आउट हाउ मच अ वहीकल हैज मेड थ्रू आउट इट्स लाइफ साइकिल एंड डेफिनेटली द फाइनेंशियल ऑपरेशन लाइक इफ द वहीकल इज लीज इज इट पेइंग द लीज वैल्यूज ऑन टाइम वेदर ऑल द फाइनेंशियल ई एम आईज आर बींग पेड ऑन टाइम और नॉट do i have any financial transaction spending from the bank side which is not paid so these are typical financial operations um, as in a live entity or uh, a vehicle should pursue then we move forward to uh, i work because that's the uh, that's the income section where the vehicle is going to earn until what we have seen the vehicle has proven its identity then we have seen where the vehicle is uh, uh, providing the where the vehicle is consuming uh, the money now we are going to see where the vehicle is going to get this money uh, from so definitely the freight operations and the fleet management are the most important uh, activities here so uh, in the freight operations like vehicle should be able to determine the smart route like uh, if uh, a vehicle is running from point a to point b what is the shortest route possible and where i am going to consume the lesser fuel which is uh, a vehicle should also be uh, able to consider all the weather conditions and uh, all these things together and the job assignments vehicle is a uh, vehicle should not be standing too much time at the warehouses just in the standing queues so um, because our machines uh, what daimler builds it's uh, capable to run 24 for 7 it's so heavy and so heavy duty that um, they do not have any problem even if they run for 24 for 7 so we should not be wasting time uh, on standing or um, like a uh, and during this uh, all the blockages on the roads so vehicle should be able to make those decisions and so also like if there is um, as we have seen that we are also trying for the vehicle platooning so which platoon is uh, most uh, useful for me so i uh, as a vehicle i should be able to uh, take that decision right and in the fleet of fleet management basically uh, here we want to cut the, down the driver wages which uh, uh, generally a company spend on a driver on monthly uh, basis uh, and then or the insurance of uh, the driver and uh, as we have seen uh, that uh, there is a shortage of the drivers in especially in japan and i think the similar conditions are there in europe also where we have seen the skilled drivers are very less available and when the skilled drivers are available they are highly uh, wagered so um, how can we uh, work out those conditions as well and the overall cost management like um, vehicle should be able to interact with the erp systems or the cost functions of a company so that it can produce all the bills together and all the invoices which it has earned and all the credit notes together and the, for the consolidation so that the cost management can take it together and uh, produce the final uh, profit and loss statement now uh, this completes uh, uh, the life cycle of a vehicle now i would like to show you how a self governed commercial vehicle looks like when it is there on the road so here we uh, we can see from the bottom there is a service provider who provides certain services to the vehicle since vehicle is uh, equipped with the uh, machine identity vehicle does the handshaking with the service provider infrastructure vehicle make sure that it is a known or it is a valid service provider and then once the identity confirmation is done then the vehicle is open for taking the services from that service provider we can also build the reputation of uh, that identity mechanism on top of uh, any platform which we want to utilize so uh, that the vehicle uh, can be rated on terms of uh, these services and then the once the service consumption is uh, done from the vehicle side the, from the infrastructure side and then uh, infrastructure produces the invoice and the bill uh to the vehicle vehicle validates the invoice and the bill and provides the digital signature by having its own uh, private key which is a, a part of the uh, integrated hardware and uh, once this invoice is signed then this signed invoice can be passed on to the cost management and the erp function 
so uh, and the, the signed invoice can also be passed on to the uh, service provider which can produce at the time at the monthly uh, month uh, ending the, all these signed invoices to the courier company and uh, they can do the payment netting once the payment netting is uh, available then it can be uh, adjusted against the machine account which uh, is where we say that what we have seen in the IAM part now the vehicle is a legal entity and it's uh, capable to do its uh, know your vehicle processes along with the uh, as per the banking regulations or the financial mandates so once the vehicle is having its own account so all those netted bills can be adjusted against the machine account at the same time cost and erp functions can produce the monthly closing things uh, to the uh, against the bank account and uh, what we are seeing right now this is the trusted infrastructure so it can be uh, any middle layer which is uh, being um, regulated by the banking system or uh, the decentralized finance system or the robonomics part where um, it it adjusted the machine account against the available balances and uh, then provides the uh, fees to the service provider so this is how uh, uh, generally uh, uh, in the logistic industry we pay at the end of the month not uh, in the real time but yeah so when we talk about all these things the most important aspect here since we are dealing with the time we are dealing with the money we are dealing with the vehicle which is most important for us and we are bringing life to it since it is a machine then we need to make sure that we follow the security standards and what we as uh, we have coined uh, so what we have seen in the v2x economy which is completely driven by the global standards of the cyber security and uh, our solution is uh, well fortified by the security controls so we are taking the security life cycle uh, basically this devsecops framework uh, right from the uh, starting the first line of the code and making sure that we follow all the guidelines and uh, avoid all the open uh, tech surfaces and for the product development itself we are also relying on the public infrastructure not necessarily it has to be centralized but we uh, we are also checking out some of the platforms which are uh, providing this public uh, key infrastructure in the decentralized way where we can form a consortium or we can go open uh, so 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 that's where we bring the digital certificates and the signature capabilities to the vehicle as well the trusted infrastructure and uh, then this uh, hardware secure module so definitely it's uh, required for the key storage so these are the basic things we have to make sure that it is a part of the i m section of uh, the vehicle and there are some standards which we have baseline to uh, bring such solutions to the market like we uh, we are following the fifth 1864 and uh, NIST P256, NCX9 or X509. So all these are standards which are highly important to us, which we have baselined our solutions to, to make sure that the systems are interoperable and secure enough for doing the handshaking with the uh, known or unknown infrastructure once the M2M economy is on the full swing. So that's the overall perspective that we want to bring. Now maybe we can talk about some initial applications which we have done on this uh, uh, machine identity platform. So um, Martin, would you like to take it forward? Yeah. Thanks Akash uh, for your explanation. I think uh, what we are also talking is about to bringing the truck uh, f coming from the object uh, who is used to being the subject in the future to act uh, um, on behalf of somebody. Um, for sure, uh, in the center, there is the ID yeah, and uh, several applications to manage the costs and uh, also uh, include the revenues. Um, just uh, as you know, there is the toll, uh, a car uh, or a truck can connect to a toll station and uh, do the payment. Um, we have uh, payment capabilities. Uh, we have uh, um, already prototypes where um, e-money uh, is uh, the, the, the 
truck can hold it. Yeah. On the other side, there is uh, also services which are not related necessarily to payments, but it's about exchanging data and enabling other new business models. Yeah. Business models or other um, models means, uh, for example, insurance. Um, that uh, new uh, that insurance is, is interested in the data of the truck and offer other uh, contracts in the future based on uh, telematic data from the trucks. Same like uh, fuel cards, tokenized plastic cards uh, is the future. Um, pay per use cases by leasing. Um, these uh, all is uh, uh, open a world of new services where the uh, truck can organize and orchestrate um, with the um, uh, service provider. So this Definitely. was, um, I think, um, my um, uh, points. Um, so I hope uh, you got a glimpse in where the com uh, commercial vehicle will head in the future. Yeah? And um, that uh, connectivity is one of the keys uh, to develop the uh, business of commercial vehicles in the future besides selling only uh, the hardware. Great. I would also like to mention that like last year, we did a very successful POC uh, on this machine identity uh, with the charge and um, with the charging station where we use these called a framework from the DLT side. And um, we in the in this POC we had our uh, e-money running uh, in terms of tokens, uh, where we uh, enabled basically uh, two entities, vehicle as one of the entity, and uh, then the charging station as another entity. We did with the single one, but um, I'm sure that the scaling can also be done. So what we did here, uh, we enabled uh, trucks with the machine identity, which are completely compatible with the Corda framework. And uh, then we uh, did a charging in the lab conditions of a vehicle uh, along with the energy charge station framework. And uh, then the vehicle identified how much charge it has taken, how much uh, value against the charge it has to uh, transfer and uh, out of this uh, digital store of value vehicle has transferred some value to the charging station account so this is how they have uh, done the payment netting but then we realized that and uh, being a vehicle to uh, become a node in the dlt industry it's uh, at this point of time it's a difficult task so industry is needing the thin clients which is uh, uh, where uh, the truck can be a node itself and um, a machine can become uh, an, an entity in the network itself. So likewise, uh, a several or uh, um, n number of uh, POCs and uh, activities are possible when we think from the perspective of the identity, the tokenization and the uh, uh, DLT frameworks and the decentralized frameworks. And I'm sure that they will come up in the future also, where we are also working together with a lot of partners to bring such services to our customers. So, yeah, so that's uh, my explanation from the application part. And uh, I hope that we were able to cover and uh, live up to your expectations from this talk. And um, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, you will have a lot of questions. So uh, we are here throughout the day over the chat section you can reach out to us in case if you miss out then we are also available on the linkedin uh, where you can find us and uh, uh, you can reach out to us uh, for any open questions we are very happy to answer we are also very happy to understand your uh, um, uh, suggestions like how shall we uh, what do you think about the solution what else would you like to see in such solutions and um, what is your perspective with this regard? So um, we are very open for such a uh, intelligent community, I would say. And uh, thanks very much uh, for having us here and listening and giving us your precious 50 minutes. Thanks a lot also from my side. Thanks, Akash. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks, Have Martin. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah.